All right, good afternoon. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, and finally, it has been a long week for me. Uh, a lot of good lucks, a lot of hope you do well. And let me just say that uh, I've been in some pretty big games and I'm not sure I had this many people text me, call me, uh, see me on the street and wish me good luck uh, before some event. So a credit to you all and, and uh, happy to be here. Got two players with me, Bo Nix, quarterback, and Owen Papo. And I just want to start off with talking about those two guys, the reason why they're here. Uh, we're going to have competition on our team at every position as we get into fall camp. And our guys know that. But those two players in particular have done a great job really since I've been there and we've had the staff assembled of helping lead our football team and really sharing the message of what we're trying to accomplish now uh, with myself, our staff, and the things that we want to get done at Auburn University and with our football program. So uh, I know they're going to do a great job today. They'll answer your questions. Uh, they've been leading and doing a tremendous job this summer. Both guys are hard workers. Uh, and they deserve the opportunity to be here to represent their team. We have a lot of players right now that are finishing up the summer workouts, and we'll get more into that, uh, and that have also done a great job. But these two in particular, I'm proud that they're here, and, and I'm looking forward to watching them, and you all have a chance to speak with them today and how they handle themselves. Uh, I'm proud to be here in the SEC. Uh, when you drive up here and it says it just means more, I really believe that. And that was something from afar, being in the Mountain West and being at Boise State, and go back to uh, this last season during COVID, when everyone was trying to figure out a way to play and how we were going to handle the situations with the pandemic. And the SEC kept forging ahead. Uh, I think that has to do with the leadership, uh, the medical folks, and, and just the importance of football and how they treat their student athletes and what they want to accomplish in this league. And so as I sat back there as a coach at another program, I really felt that, you know, the SEC has got it figured out. It does mean more. And so uh, I'm honored to be at Auburn University. Uh, I'm proud to be here in the SEC and to be a part of this conference and to represent our program. Uh, the, the most important thing to me is my family. And one of the things that, that I've learned over the last seven months uh, is just how awesome Auburn, uh, the community, the university really is. And let, let me just say this. So my family, I've got two daughters, 21 and 19, Devin and Dane. I've got a son who's 15. That'll be at Auburn High School. And my wife, Kess, and I are all from Boise. And so we made this move. We came you know, a couple thousand miles away. Uh, to come to Auburn. And as a football coach, when you come into the facility, you have 250 people at a place like this, and we're all charging towards one goal. We want to win championships. We want to get better every single day. All the things you hear from every coach that's been up here and has talked. But the, one pe the, the people and the most important people in your lives, you know, how are they going to be taken care of? And, and I can say this, my family, the Auburn community, uh, I can't thank them enough. Uh, my family loves it. My daughters, my son, uh, they love living in Auburn. I've asked them and just said, hey, tell me what it's like. And they love it. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, we love it. This is unbelievable. And, and so the community, the university, the people, my wife and I, we couldn't be more appreciative to be in a place like Auburn. And, and I want the people to know that because for our coaches and their families and my family, in order for us to be elite at our jobs, we have to know the people that we care about most are taken care of and they live in a great place and, and our families definitely are getting that right now from the Auburn community and the Auburn family. So uh, thank you for that and uh, very much appreciated uh, on uh, my behalf and on the coach's behalf. Our focus right now is, is really finishing up. Our guys are uh, in their last couple weeks of workouts. So today they had a chance to get up early. They're in the upper decks of the stadium. They're running the stairs and they're getting after it. They're gonna finish up tomorrow. We'll all be together for that. And then this next week, we'll kind of have our crescendo for our training and the guys will get a few days off before we start fall camp August 5th. And we have our report day. And that's really the focus right now 
is finishing up this summer, making sure that all the work that we've put in to physically develop ourselves as a team, that continues and we finish at a high level, and that we take all that work and effort and strain and all those tough situations we had to thrive in, and we apply it to fall camp. And August 5th, we're gonna have our team meeting. We'll be out on the practice field the next day. We'll have split practices for the first two, so we'll have young and old, so we can focus on some of the new players and some of the guys that we brought in. And then we're all together day three. And we're rolling. And we're gonna have a chance to get the coaches and the players all back together. And you know, one of the things that, that I was so proud of that we got a chance to do was have spring practice. Those 15 practices as a new staff, um, you can't put a value on that. To put in a new system, to get around the players, to have a new staff out there installing systems, getting face to face, working on drills and the fundamentals and the techniques that we all need to be successful at this game to play really good football. Uh, we had an opportunity to do that. And our doctors, Dr. Goodlett, our medical staff, uh, they allowed us to make that happen. And, you know, we've tested our guys. We've been through the, the COVID protocols uh, for the last five months. We've had no positives. Our guys are taking it seriously. And, and that's really important to me because I know that they're sacrificing a lot to be out there and participating in the workouts and making sure that we have a chance to get started this August with our fall camp where everybody's available and ready to go out there and play. Um, part of you know, the protocols, you know, I know there's been a lot of conversations about the vaccinations, you know, where teams are at. Um, our medical staff, you know, they have those answers a lot better than I do. I think we're in that 60% range right now. At this point, um, we're educating our players. Uh, we're making sure that they understand, you know, from our medical staff, the pros and cons. I mean, I think they've done a really good job of letting our guys make those individual decisions on what this means for our football team, what this means for this conference, what this means for, for competition in the future. And, you know, that's one of the things that, that we do. We're all teachers at this level, all right? We're college football coaches, but we teach. And we've got to give our players uh, the information and educate them on, all right, here's what you need to know and let them make decisions. And for a lot of them, all right, this is deeply personal, and I respect that. I respect that with our staff. I respect that for myself, our players, uh, and understand that. And so our goal is to educate and give them information and then let our players make that decision. And, and they understand uh, the 85%. They, they've got a chance to hear and see and read all about those things. And, and I believe in our players. I believe in our medical staff. And I believe in the way that we've educated our players to make the right decisions and understand and respect their decisions and know that it's personal. Um, as far as NIL, man, there is a lot to learn on this name, image, and likeness. And there's been a lot of questions about it. You know, not many coaches can answer, what does this mean? And you can go through the obvious, right? <clears throat> what does that mean when the star player is making more than the guys that are actually doing the work? in front of them. What's that going to look like? I think it comes back to your team. I think it comes back to the guys that are in that locker room, how they treat each other, and just know that there's not going to be the same deals for everybody on the football team. Uh, how do you explain that and show that? Well, there's going to be examples that we're going to be given that we're going to have a chance to use over time to show our players, hey, this is how they handled it. This is how they handled it. Here's how we can handle it. And so you're just going to need some more information, in my opinion, to make uh, calculated and educated guesses on where we think this thing is going. Uh, the one thing about it, you know, football right now, it, it, it's at this level especially, and if you want to be an elite player, all right, one of the things it takes is tremendous focus and time. Tremendous focus and time. And so, you know, guys that are going to utilize this NIL, and I, I think it's an awesome opportunity for guys to make uh, some money, to be able to do some things from a business standpoint and really learn that lesson along the way. Uh, and also, as we explained in our first meeting when we talked about it, all right, to understand taxes, because not anybody in there really knew that. They're taking their amount of money, dividing it by 12, and you're like, hold on a second, there are taxes. They're like, what's that? All right, so. All right, we explained that to them. So, you know, we're getting a chance to, to educate them on real life things. Uh, but the one thing, you know, as a coach, you, you want to you surround your players 
with fantastic people and the best people that you have in your program and on your coaching staff. And, and we've just opened this up. Now there's going to be more people in our players' lives, and we have to understand that. We have to educate our players, and we also have to understand you know, that our relationship with our guys, our environment we create every single day has got to be strong because there's going to be a lot of influencers, all right? Not just our players, but people that are going to be involved with our players' lives now. And you still have to get up and be on time for your workout. You still have to follow the nutrition plan. You still have to make sure that you're where you need to be for class. You still have to show up on time for practice in that meeting room with your notebook and your pen and ready to take notes and be a student of the game. And at the end of practice, the recovery time that you have and all the things you're asked to do in order to be an elite football player and a great student athlete that takes time. And so I think one thing that you know, players are all going to have to to really work through themselves is how much time do I have to devote to these things and still be elite in the areas that are most important to me? Don't know the answer to that yet. Um, don't know what that's going to look like right now. But you know, as coaches um, in this NIL, I mean, it's different everywhere you go. Some places you can help, some places you can't. Uh, but at the end of the day, you sit in those players' homes with their families, and they look to you to take care of their sons. And so when something doesn't go right, uh, we're going to be involved because players are going to come to us for advice. And that's just another area that, as coaches, we have to grow and develop ourselves to really have those kind of conversations. I mean, you don't want to, certainly on a Wednesday of a game week, but it's going to happen. And you're going to have to be prepared for it. And so that's another layer for our coaching staff and people in our program that we've got to be ready for. Third downs, yeah, but you know what? We also got a situation all right, when uh, one of our players are dealing with somebody that, that we have no control over. So you know, those are the things that are, that are coming down the road that we have to continue to stay focused on. Um, those are things that we're aware of. But ultimately, uh, for us right now, as we get into practice, we've got 25. We're getting ready for September 4th against Akron. That is the focus uh, at Auburn. Uh, I know the other games that we play. I know the other teams on the schedule. But you got to win the first one. you got to go out there and, and put on the field uh, your very best performance so we can evaluate that and learn from it. And so that is our number one focus. And, and for me, the things I'm most excited about, I'm excited about Tiger Walk. I want to walk from South Donahue all the way down into Jordan-Hare Stadium. And I want to see all those people yelling, War Eagle. I want to be in that stadium with 90,000 people going crazy because I've heard nothing but how the environment is. And I got a chance to experience that in a bad way when I was at Arkansas State. So I've got a little taste of that. And now, you know, those folks are going to be on our side. And then I want to be able to be a part of a program that when you win, all right, your fans go crazy and go downtown and we toilet paper trees. I mean, how awesome is that? I've never been a part of that. I've been a part of great programs, and I've been around great people. But you have all these things. And you know, for me, I'm looking forward to that. That's why you come to Auburn. That's why you're in the SEC, because it does mean more. All right, And opportunities like that, it's not, it's not like that at other places. And so my family, myself, our coaching staff, uh, we're all excited to be here. Uh, we're all proud to represent Auburn University. Uh, we love where we live. We love the people uh, in our community. We love the staff we put together. And we're looking forward to getting our players back together and really working every single day on just playing good football. Playing good football every day and being consistent. And if we can do that, we can be that 1-0 type team every single day. Then come Saturday, September 4th, when we go play, we all should have a chance to see that. So. Uh, and again, I want to thank you all for being here uh, this entire week. And you know, I've got a chance to see some of uh, the questions and, and conversations and some of the other coaches come up here and, and talk about their programs. Um, and you know, different for me, no different for me. I just I want to thank you. I know that the coverage of this sport, the coverage of this conference, uh, it does matter. And uh, coming from another conference not too long ago, uh, we all pay attention to it. So, you know, we'll, we'll do a great job with it today. And with that, I'll open it up for questions. Thank you, Coach. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a mic. Victoria Lawrence and Fuller have microphones. 
And so we will start over on our left-hand side alongside the wall. Mike? Hey, Coach. Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. You followed Gus Malzahn twice now, I think, at Arkansas State and now at Auburn. Yeah. Do you guys have any sort of relationship? Do you know him? And also, do you have a good grasp of the pressure cooker you're walking into at Auburn? <laughs> Uh, we do have a – let me go back here. Um, yes, I know Gus. We have a relationship to a degree. And, and I'll start back in 2007. Gus was at Tulsa. And I was the offensive coordinator, and I wanted – I read his book, his, his book that he wrote in high school about tempo. Uh, and there was a lot of great things in there. And he's a great offensive mind. And so I wanted to go see him. So Chris Peterson and I – uh, and our offensive line coach at the time, we went to Tulsa, and we got a chance to sit down for a couple days and just talk football, talk about tempo, talk about how he does things. Um, and so we took a lot away from that, and that spring we installed some of that no huddle and, and some of those ideas. And so I've always admired Gus. I've always uh, thought he's a great offensive mind. Uh, and then it just happens to be, right, when he leaves Arkansas State, here I come. And then he's going on to Auburn. And there was coaches on that staff, one that was here, Eli Drinkwitz, you know, was one of them. That was a part of that transition that uh, I kept and stayed on my staff during that time. And then, you know, when this came up, so, you know, we had just, you know, in Boise, we were good. You know, we had just built a home, and, and this is where we wanted to be, and, and our mindset was this is, what we want to, this is where we want to be, where we want to stay, and this is what we're going to do. And when Alan Green called me, and said, hey, you know, I'd, and I'd known Alan previous. He, he told the story about, you know, our time we met in the pool and, and you know, it was all innocent and everything. So uh, he said, you remember me? And I said, hell yeah, I do. And he was at Auburn. And, and right then and there, um, man, it piqued my interest more than any other place. And, and a lot because of him, a lot because of the creed, a lot because of just, you know, this conference as well. And, you know, the obvious is, you know, Gus Malzahn is there. And that's one of the things that just personally you're like, okay, you know, this would be, you know, me following him again. And, um, you know, right now, no, do we have a relationship right now? Do we talk every day? No, we don't. Um, you know, I know where he's at at UCF. Terry Mahajer was the athletic director that hired me at Arkansas State. So we have this weird web of connection, all right, uh, Coach Malzahn and I do. And, uh, I got a lot of respect for him, and, and then, you know, of all teams they play in the beginning, it's Boise State on a Thursday. So the coaches I know at Boise State, they're like, we've seen a lot of Auburn. And so there's just, you know, it doesn't really go away at this point, but, um, uh, you know, I wish him the best. And, you know, as far as, as you know, what you're getting into, here's what I think. Um, for me as a, as a coach and as a competitor, everything I do, um, I want to win. And so, you know, the preparation and, and all the things that, that go into that, it doesn't matter if I'm at Capitol High School or I'm at Auburn and, and coaching the, the football team there. I mean, it's, it all matters. And so uh, the importance of it, all right, what surrounds it is, is definitely different, definitely different, all right? There's a lot more attention that goes into being the head coach at Auburn University. As far as the importance of, you know, my job and how I view it, um, I've always felt like, you know, I've tried to prepare and, and find ways to win and, and every little thing is, you know, has mattered, you know, to me. And, and I've tried to work that way and try to develop myself that way. So, um, you know, what we did today in our workouts, it matters, what we do tomorrow and so on. And uh, I'm going to continue that. Uh, I know that, you know, the microscope is um, a lot different, you know, at Auburn. Uh, but that was part of it, too, as a competitor. And I said this. I mean, this is why you come to Auburn. This is why you want to be in the SEC. You want to play against the best. You've got the best talent, all right, not just in football, but in any sport in the SEC. The best athletes in the world come to the SEC. You've got LPGA. You've, you've got NBA players. You've got Olympians. You've got NFL players. You've got the best. You've got the best coaches that are in the SEC. And so if you want to be a part of that, you know, understand what you're getting into, all right, and the level uh, that all those coaches take each and every day and every one of those players. So uh, do I understand that? Yes. Do you work every single day to, to be in that elite group? Yes. And uh, 
Um, the weirdness, you know, of Gus and Brian Harson, I can't explain that. I'm not sure if there'll be another one, but uh, I think we're the only two that have, have probably done that ever. Coach, we'll go down here to the front left. Bob. Uh, hey, hey, Brian, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. How, how you doing? Good, Bob. Um, hey, I had kind of, kind of a t t two-parter here. Um, what do you remember about that game when you were at ASU and, and went to Auburn? Do you remember thinking, wow, this would be a great place to be? Did you ever imagine you'd be back as the coach? And, you know, you, you're from Boise at your alma mater. You guys won like 800 percent or 800 winning percentage. Was it hard to leave even for a job as good as Auburn? Well, here's what I – let me tell you the story about that game. All right, going into the Auburn game, so – the players, when I was at Arkansas State, Coach Malzahn and the staff had gray uniforms. They never got to wear them. So in that game, uh, I thought, you know what? This is going to be our opportunity here. We're going to wear, wear our gray uniforms in this game. Kind of had it all clear with Coach Malzahn, because you'll get a penalty for that. It was all going to be good. Uh, there was going to be no issues with it. Um, and then he changed his mind and took the two 15-yard penalties at each half right there. So put us behind in that game. We actually played well offensively. Uh, we had some really good players in that game, but I remember going into that environment and, you know, as you look up in the stands, you, know, you can't hear a thing, all right? It's shaking on the field and you're trying to get a play out to your quarterback. Uh, it was difficult. And, uh, you know, I thought our guys did play well um, in that game. And, you know, as far as is leaving a program like Boise State. Uh, I'm an alum. I, I have uh, a lot of pride in that program. I bleed blue, always will. Uh, that's where I played, and I spent a lot of time, and I, and I cut my teeth as a coach. And I worked for unbelievable people. You know, it started with Dirk Cutter. And I had Dirk Cutter, and I had Mark Helfrich uh, my last two seasons as a player. Dirk Cutter, you know, great coach on his own. Mark Helfrich was the head coach at Oregon. And so I had two tremendous coaches that taught me the game, which really gave me the love for football because I understood it better. Uh, and then I had uh, Dan Hawkins, who I work with. And Dan gave me my first opportunity uh, at 23 years old, 24 years old, to be the tight ends coach. Chris Peterson took over. You know, Dan was a guy that was all about building culture and, and uh, that connection with players. And Chris Peterson took over. And Chris is about process and details and, and one of the most phenomenal coaches I've ever been around in my entire life. And so uh, a lot of things that I take with me every single day into our program comes from, from what I learned at Boise State. And I got a chance to work with Mac Brown at Texas. Mac Brown is, is maybe the best human being really in the world. And I got a chance to be around him and watch how he treats people and the way he does things and to watch his every day. And I was one of the coaches that was not afraid to walk in his office and just have a conversation with him and ask him how he's doing. Um, so, you know, I've had a lot of great experiences. Um, you know, is it hard to leave those things? And that, that's part of the progression. And like I told you before, being at Boise State is special, but this was different. And there's been other opportunities, but not like this. And, and it's the leadership at Auburn. It's, it's now what I've learned, even more so the community at Auburn and the chance to be in the SEC and to play against the very best. And, and when you do, and you do it at a high level, you have a chance to be the very best as well. And, and that really, as a competitor, um, was a big draw for me. And in the last seven months, you know, I didn't know how this whole thing would go better than expected. We haven't played a game, uh, but I'm proud to be at Auburn. Coach, we'll go over the right section alongside the right-hand wall. Lance Dahl with the Auburn Network. Coach, you talked in your opening statement about the Auburn family and the community and how important it is to uh, everybody in Auburn. But it, talk about the culture for a second. Talk about how important that is and what type of culture you're bringing to Auburn and what this coaching staff is bringing to Auburn. Is it any different than what Auburn has seen in the past? Well, I, I think there's – let me just say this, and, and let me back up. Um, Auburn's had a lot of success in the past. They've had a lot of great coaches. They've had a lot of great people come through their program. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to get a chance to talk with some of that. We had Sammy Coach, Trevon Reed. I've met Bo Jackson. I've got a chance to be around um, a, lot of a lot of different players that um, have come through Auburn. And so, you know, we're building a new facility, right? And we had one that was, was there a long time, but there's a lot of great players, Cam Newton, Heisman Trophy winners, and so on, that came through that program. And so, you know, is it different every staff? Absolutely. All right, the one thing for us, you know, as we come in right now, I mean, we, we have to do a great job of connecting with our players. 
we got to get to know them. Uh, and through COVID, that didn't help, right? Being able to know their families and, and being out there on the road and, and getting face to face, we had to do it via Zoom and other ways uh, and be very creative. But connecting with our players and letting them know, number one, we're here for you. Number two, here are the expectations. Well, what are the expectations from you? Simple, your personal best. Simple. Show up, care, and repeat every single day. And you know how we're going to do that? You're going to do it to the very best of your ability every single day. That's the standard. All right, how do we do that? Discipline. All right, understand what discipline is. Not disciplining, not punishment. What is discipline? All right, self-regulation. All right, you got to be able to get up and do things over and over and over to build those habits to be successful. Understand that. You want to be great, here's what it takes. All right, what comes with discipline? Toughness. All right, if you're going to do that consistently and in this game, you better be tough physically and mentally. All right, you better be able to perform at your very best when the circumstances are against you. I don't want you to survive. I want you to thrive in situations where things get really difficult and tough for you. And then the last one is conviction. I want you to believe. And number one in yourself, like you better believe you can win. You better believe you can hit that weight. You better believe you can make those 300s. You better believe you can run those decks. When you wake up, I want you believing in yourself and I want you believing in what we're doing. And so when we go out there and play on September 4th, I want our fans and everybody that watches and tunes into our game, I want them to see a disciplined team, a tough team, and a team that believes they can win every time they step on the field and every single practice. So, you know, is that different from what the previous staff had? I have no idea. I didn't dive into, you know, what their core values were. Um, I got a chance, you know, what I did when I took the job is I wanted to see it. I wanted to witness you know, what this team was about. I wanted to see why guys show up late. I wanted to see why guys didn't finish. I wanted to see those things for my, myself with my own eyes and make my own determinations. Maybe they don't know or maybe they don't care. Either way, that was a problem. So we've had to change that. You want to win, you want to be consistent, you want to be one of those teams that every single year, all right, you're in the hunt for an opportunity to play and win a championship. All right, well, you better bring your personal best every single day. You better be disciplined, you better be tough, and you better have conviction for what it is you're doing. And, um, you know, that's, that's been my message with our guys. And, and then we've, we've simplified that more. We've talked about character, and we simplified it down to just being one to know. And there's things that come with that. But, hey, focus on the task at hand, the moments that you're in, uh, because there's a lot of distractions. And let's just go one to know. And simplifying that every single day, when you can win that day and you stack those days together, then come Saturdays, what do you do? Exactly what you want. You cut it loose. You know I've won Sunday through Friday. So what am I going to do on Saturday? I'm going to win. And that's what everybody wants. So, all right, you don't do that unless you know deep down inside you've done everything you can all those days to have yourself ready to go out there and play that way. And if you're out there thinking and playing and going like, damn, should I have done more? That's not going to win games in this conference. So your personal best every single day, that's the expectation. We have a, pro a plan for you and a blueprint that we've shared with our guys. And then the discipline, toughness, and conviction every single day uh, are the things that we've talked about in our program. And that's who we are. That's who we'll always be. And those are the things that we strive for daily. All right, Coach Harrison, thank you for your time this morning. All right, thank you, War Eagle. Alabama has a record number of open jobs. Find yours at your local career center.